Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an absolutely insane mini PC from Intel known as the Nook 12 Extreme, codename Dragon Canyon. So I've been really excited to get my hands on this new 12th generation Nook because it's powered by the all new Intel Alder Lake i9-12900. This is the non-K variant and it supports a full size dual slot desktop GPU. So I mean, when this thing's put together, it's going to be an absolute powerhouse for sure. But if you do pick one of these up, keep in mind they come bare bones, so you will have to add a GPU, RAM, and storage. There are some companies out there selling these fully assembled, but this one here is a bare bones kit with that i9-12900 CPU. And even though we're working with such a small form factor PC, it's actually really easy to get this thing put together. Around back here, we have four screws, and we need to remove this back plate. That way we can remove both side panels and get access to the internals. So this back plate pulls right off. And we can slide both side panels off very easily. We just had those four screws in the back panel there. Now we have access to the internals and all the magic happens right here in what's known as the compute element. And since this is a bare bones unit, I will have to add my own storage, RAM, and GPU. But the storage, RAM, and CPU are all housed inside of this compute element. And this is removable. It actually slots right down into what's like a PCIe X16 slot on this daughter board in the bottom. We've also got a 650 watt power supply and our PCIe X16 slot for a GPU. It supports a full size dual slot desktop GPU. And real quick, we'll take a look at this. It slots right down. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's another little slot there for the compute element. We can remove two screws and get the side panel right off. And this will give us access to our M.2 slots, our RAM slots, and the CPU itself. The cooler is also built into the compute unit, and with the 12900, we've got 16 cores and 24 threads. I'm really interested to see how the temps are on this unit. But before I get into testing, I do need to add my RAM and storage. I'm going with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz and a Kingston Fury 2 terabyte M.2 SSD. As you can see, everything fits in here really nicely, and around back, there's actually another M.2 SSD slot, so we can have three drives in this unit at one time. When it comes to the GPU, we do have three 8-pin power connectors here from that 650 watt power supply. And the GPU I chose to use in this PC is a Zotac RTX 3070. I would have loved to go with something like a 3080 Ti, but the only one I have on hand is a triple slot and it just won't fit inside of this case. But once we're finished up, it looks something like this, and I was really impressed by how well everything went together in here. Uh, it's amazing to see one of these cards in here. I know it's not top of the line 3090 or 3080. But this RTX 3070 paired up with the 12900 should give us some really good 4K performance. And like all of these NUC Extremes, we do have some RGB on the sides, and we have that Intel Skull logo on the front here. This is all accessible from the BIOS, so you can change the colors, you can set up how you want it to look. So when it comes to the specs of the unit I have here, for the CPU, we have that new Alder Lake Intel i9-12900, non-K variant. We've got 16 cores and 24 threads. And with that, we get eight performance cores and eight efficiency cores. For the performance cores, base clock is 2.4 gigahertz with a max turbo up to 5.1. I use 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. This does have Wi-Fi 6E built in and I'm running Windows 11 Pro on this unit. All right, so here we are. I've got Windows 10 Pro installed on that two terabyte Fury M.2 SSD. It's actually really quiet right now, but I'm sure these fans are gonna ramp up once we put a load on that CPU and GPU. From the BIOS, it's set to balanced, but you can also set it to cool or you can go manual with it. I'm in balanced mode right now, but with all of the gaming and emulation you're gonna see in this video, it will be in cool mode. And that's just gonna ramp the fans up to try to keep this 12900 nice and cool because right now we've got 16 cores with 24 threads and it can pull a lot of wattage. Now the non-K variant, which we have in this NUP, is a 65 watt part, but this thing can pull up to around 130 watts in some cases. Now that's really an extreme load on all 16 cores, but it can still get there. So yeah, the way it is right now, it definitely looks like we're going to be able to pull some really good numbers out of this while gaming. And uh, most of this stuff, I'm just going to go for it at 4K Ultra. Some I might have to take down a bit. But before we get into gaming and emulation, I did run some benchmarks and I want to show you the results of those. When it comes to Geekbench 5, single core is looking really good with a 1773, multi 12,627. Not bad at all for being a non-K variant. Next on the list, we have 3D Mark Firestrike. Total score, 29,794. 
And finally, Time Spy with an impressive 13,485. So yeah, with that RTX 3070 paired up with that 12900, I think we're going to get some really good gaming performance, so let's go ahead and move over there now. First on the list, we have Forza Horizon 5, 4K Ultra, and I really wasn't expecting it to do this well. We're getting an average of 92 FPS out of this game, and to tell you the truth, I'm pretty sure we could have went up to extreme with this and still got over 60, but it looks amazing, 4K Ultra here, and it's just such a smooth experience. Next up, we have Halo Infinite, 4K Ultra, and you know, I wasn't expecting it to get much over 60. It did a pretty decent job. I would definitely suggest taking some of these settings down to high or just setting it up at 4K high. But we got an average of 61 FPS like this, and it's still playable, but we did have dips under 60. Moving over to the new God of War PC port, they've done an amazing job with this. We're at 4K Ultra DLSS set to ultra quality, and I'm getting an average of 71 FPS. Totally playable like this, and playing this on PC at 4K over 60 really does turn it into a whole nother game. I beat this on the PS4 Pro, absolutely amazing at 30 FPS, but bringing it up to 4K 60 does change the whole game. Dirt 5 is one of those games that does take a lot of power to run. Here we're at 4K High Ultra Mix. I wanted to go to Ultra High with everything, but unfortunately it was dipping down under 60. With it set up like this, we got an average of 68 FPS. And the final PC game I wanted to test before we move over to some emulation was Doom Eternal. We're at 4K Ultra Nightmare, and we got an average of 103 FPS. Really great performance on this RTX 3070 with the 12900. Now it's time to move over to some emulation, my favorite part of these videos. I wanted to throw a little bit of GameCube at it, one of my favorite racing games of all time, Automotilista, DirectX 11 at 5K. So we're over 4K here, I've only got a 4K monitor so it doesn't make much of a difference, but it's still pushing all of those pixels and we're at a constant 60 here. And we've only jumped up to around 4% CPU utilization and around 50% GPU utilization. Checking out some Xbox 360 emulation using Xenia, one of the harder games to emulate with V-Sync off. Now this will run at 30 all day long, but I really like playing this at 60. And with this setup here, we're getting so close, but there are dips under 60. When it comes to this emulator and the new Alder Lake Intel CPUs, this is definitely some of the best performance that I've seen. CXBX Reloaded for some original Xbox. We're at 4K here with DOA3 running at a constant 60. I also tested Jet Set Radio Future and Panzer Dragoon, both at 60, 4K, so we're definitely good to go with this one. Here's some PS3 using RPCS3, Skate 3, 4K, Vulcan back in. This is really great performance. We're at a constant 60, 4K, that RTX 3070 can definitely handle this at 4K and even a little bit higher, but like I mentioned before, we've only got a 4K display here, so it's not gonna make much of a visual difference. I expected this 12900 to be pulling a little more wattage because this emulator does love those cores and threads. And with most of the PS3 games that are fully compatible with RPCS3, you're gonna have a great time at 4K, but there are some games that just don't run well with this emulator yet. With a jacked up CPU like a 12900K overclocked, you can get God of War 3 running at full speed. But on this setup here, we're getting so close and this performance really comes down to emulator optimizations. In the future, I'm sure this is gonna work better on this chip here and lower end chips. But right now, when there's a lot of stuff on screen, it's just not gonna do a constant 60. When it comes to average temps at idle, it sits around 39 degrees Celsius. Average gaming, 75, a little higher than I'd like, but lower than I thought it would be given the size of this whole unit. And the maximum that I hit while running Cinebench R23 was 98 degrees Celsius, which was thermal throttle in this unit. 
So when it comes to mini PCs, this is definitely a powerhouse and one of the most powerful mini PCs that I've ever tested, and I kind of expected it. I mean, every year we'll get something a little more powerful, but this Alder Lake Intel i9-12900 is an absolute beast, and putting it in a small case like this is ridiculous, but I absolutely love it. I mean, you saw the gaming and emulation performance out of this thing. 4K Ultra, we did have one or two games that wouldn't run at Ultra, but dropping those settings down, you still got good 4K performance, even with an RTX 3070. So if you're interested in learning more about the new Dragon Canyon NUC, I will leave a link in the description, but that's going to wrap it up for this one. If there's anything else you want to see running on this, just like it sits, let me know in the comments below. Or if you want to see something with, let's say, a lower GPU, I can also throw a video out like that. It's really up to you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.